Hello, hi, good evening. Um, as many of you know, I'm doing an Instagram Live today with Davina McCall, who a lot of you hopefully know. Um, I haven't done an Instagram Live for a while, but this is a really, really important one. So um, welcome to everyone. I also want to let you know, I'm just gonna put my glasses on so I can see when Davina wants to join. I um, also want to let you know that we've got, I've got three doctors who are joined to answer some questions because if there's a lot of you coming on board, I want to really make sure that we can um, answer some questions. So um, there's Sarah Ball, Dr. Sarah Molly Ball, there's Dr. Rebecca Lewis, and also Dr. Zoe Hudson, who's down at Manchester Medical of Paws Hive. So they'll be answering in the chat. A lot of questions will be able to be answered by going to my menopause doctor website, um, www dot menopausedoctor.co.uk under resources we've got lots of things we've got videos we've got booklets we've got leaflets um, as my weekly podcast as well all free so if you are struggling and want more information then go on and um, and and make sure that you uh, look there as well because it might be not be possible to answer all your questions so I'm just waiting to see if Davina is ready I hope she is watching and I know she was doing something just before this so I will keep chatting until she comes on hang on let me just see if I can see her anywhere she's joined but I need you to to uh, to to hang on Davina I just need you to to request to join and then I can link you in so let's see if that works uh, come on Davina you just need to request hang on let's see what hang on sorry there's a few others requesting to join me but i want to be in a, rather than anyone else so let's see if she can start to join Hang on, sorry. It looks like she's requested, but I can't see her. I'm rubbish. Hang on, wait a sec. Let me just see if I can do it in another way. Hang on, sorry. Uh, let's see if that works. I'm just sending you a request, Davina, to see if that will work. I'm in. Excellent. Hey, we've done it. Brilliant. Yay. Yay. I can take my glasses off now. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd had some one earlier and I was like, oh my God, she can't see me. She can't oh, see me. I hate me. it. I hate that bit at the beginning where you're just trying to sound really cool, but you've got no idea. I might there. turn around and see if the light is better if I sit this way. Yes, that's better. Oh, brilliant. Thank um, you. So thank you ever so much for doing this. Um, for those of you that are watching, you'll hopefully know by now that a week today, week on today. the 12th of May, Davina is, I think it's the best thing you've ever done actually, Davina. Well, but, it's the um, thing I feel probably the most strongly about that I've ever done, definitely. Yeah, so it's a Channel 4 documentary that has probably taken, I think, about 18 months in the making, hasn't it? Yeah. So um, I want to give a big shout, shout out to Kate Muir, who has been incredible hasn't she she's unbelievable well i came quite late to the documentary and she'd already done all the research she'd spent months and months and months basically collating all the information and um i feel like getting angrier and angrier by the minute um and i had already sort of started my journey with you yeah. um we'd met and I, it was kind of beginning to dawn on me what an enormous issue it was I, I, I really at the time I thought well everybody must be able to get access um to HRT if they want it and the more the more I talk to women and it's just got worse and worse really I, I mean every night I'm on Twitter every night I'm on Twitter <laughs> It's, I, had, I had no idea and the other doctors I mean we've now got 41 doctors that are working with me and we all work privately because we can't get jobs in the NHS doing menopause work, which is shocking. Crazy. But none of us had any idea. So when I met some of the doctors when I first started my clinic, they said, Louise, why are you doing it privately? We do this all the time in our general practices. And I said, yeah, I have done for the last 20 years as well. But come to my clinic and sit in and you'll, you'll listen to stories of women who are denied HRT, the evidence-based treatment for the perimenopause and menopause, that we go by nice guidance and they sort of looked at me 
came and sat in and a lot of them have actually cried at the end of the day because the stories that we hear and that's why I thought I've got to do more I've got to spread the word and do more and I think it's the same obviously with you the more stories you hear you know it's not just me saying them because it's in my clinic these are women and it's not just a UK problem it's a global problem isn't it well definitely and I mean I am um... I, I, it's interesting that you said that you cried and some of them cried because I, um, I just did a podcast, you know, postcards from midlife with Lorraine yes. Yes. and um, they, they sent me a few kind of snippets from it. And one of them is just of me sobbing because she's told me a story about a woman that's posted on her channel. And it's, it's the stories of women that um, are so desperate that they feel that they can't go on with their lives. That's what I just find so heartbreaking when there's such an easy fix that costs mm -hmm. The NHS, next to nothing, I think it's something like £120 for a year's worth of um, HRT. Because often people say, oh, well, is it expensive? Is that why? It's not. No. And it's absolutely not. And I, I had no idea. And, you know, I've done a lot of psychiatry training as part of an undergraduate hospital medicine. We often saw people who were, you know, suicidal, contemplating ending their lives. And never once did I think about their hormones because no one had taught me. And mm. um, just last week, Rebecca Lewis and I had a meeting with professors at the Maudsley Hospital, so the, the big psychiatric hospital. And um, they were very engaged. We're going to start to do some research. But they all admit they don't know how to prescribe HRT. And I, they said, well, But I've I asked you this before, Louise, because we've talked about um, prescribing HRT and I often listen to women when they say they've been to their GPs and to me it sounds like the GPs are frightened because they don't know what to say, they don't know which yeah. HRT to offer, which is safe, which isn't safe and there are two very clear distinctions between safe and unsafe HRT but if there are any yeah, GPs... Yeah, I mean, there isn't actually any unsafe HRT, there's safer, but it's all pretty safe. And actually, if you compare it to the contraceptive pill, it's a lot safer than the contraceptive pill that we don't act like Smarties because it is safe. So any risks are incredibly small. But the problem is all this misinformation has been fueled and fueled over the last 20 years. And I don't know if any of you have listened to the podcast that we released yesterday with Professor Rob Langer, who was one of the investigators for the WHI study. And he talks about how they stopped the study early and they, they, they tried to get a result to stop the study because it was a billion dollar study. They weren't getting any results. So they decided to leak out the breast cancer risk that actually wasn't statistically significant, wasn't there. And he tried to stop the publication but it already gone to press. And he said, if you do this, it's going to damage women's health irreversibly. And I mean, it's already gone out to the medical press and the media. And it's really sad actually talking to him because you think, goodness me, it has been irreversible. But then you only have to go and other look other websites. I was just, before we um, started this, I was going onto the NHS website to look at menopause and HRT, just in case it had been updated. Or miraculously. It was <laughs> after the programme, lots of people will be going to it. And it's telling me here about the risks. And it, and it talks about HRT and it says types, fine. It says side effects. Well, most women don't get side effects if they're on the right dose and type. It's telling me about the risks and it's telling me about alternatives. It does mention there's a benefit in osteoporosis, but it doesn't say there's a benefit for reducing risk of diabetes, heart disease, dementia. Why not? I don't know, Davina, because I think people are slow to catch up. But actually, I think it's inexcusable when you have wrong information. We have really clear guidelines. We have really good evidence and we need to be working out of that. And it's always very difficult in medicine when things change. But nothing's really significantly different over the last 20 years. Even if you look at the WHI study, which obviously is this one that everyone thought risks, risks, the risks were very small. And even there, the risks of the sort of bad type HRT are still, the risk of breast cancer with that is less than the risk a woman has if she drinks a couple of glasses of wine a night, if she's overweight or if she doesn't exercise. So actually, What is the bad HRT? When we're talking about yeah. that, what do they, what do they say is... So the bad type is a tablet oestrogen because it has a small risk of clot. It's only very small. Um, and also the older types of progestogens. And now they have this 
may be very small risk of breast cancer, but they also have a small risk of clots and a small risk of heart disease. A lot of women find they get side effects with them as well, like a bit bloating, a bit irritable, maybe a bit spotty. And so, so when, oh, so that's the old yeah. type of progesterone, because I often hear about women that are having issues with progesterone and spotting and bloating. Yeah. And... yeah. So, so maybe that's... they're on the wrong, well, the yes. other thing, that, so the newer ones are body identical, which means that they are, they are producing the same as what, the same yeah, hormones. If, we, if you look down the microscope, you'll see it's exactly the same structure, the same formulation as the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone we produce ourselves. And they're all derived from the yam plants, so not from pregnant horse. So they're plant-based. It's so not from plant -based. horse urine. Yeah, the I mean, modern HRT is plant-based. Yeah. It's not yeah. from horse urine. It is body identical, not bio identical, because bio identical is unregulated. Yeah, so we still sometimes people, it's, it can be confusing because some people say regulated bio identical, which is the same as body identical, but if it's compounded bio identical, so basically if it's expensive, don't do it. If the clinic's asking you to do a saliva test or blood tests and, and it just feels uncomfortable, it's often a compounded bio identical. So all the products are available on the NHS, or they should be the estrogen and the progesterone. The testosterone, as you know, isn't licensed for women, which is, in my mind, absolutely outrageous that we're not allowed our own hormone back. Louise, tell them about testosterone in terms of testosterone estrogen production. This absolutely blew me away when you told me this. So women produce about four times more testosterone than estrogen before the menopause. See, it's our hormone. <laughs> so, and it is, and you, but you know what, Davina, I didn't even know that until about six years ago. I sat in a clinic, I decided I wanted to do more menopause work, and I've always given, actually, the old style HRT for the last 20 years to people, because that's all I knew, really. Um, and most of them still felt better, and they, they ha were healthier, so that was fine. And then the new type came out and was more, more prescribed. And I sat in a clinic in London and this, this very learned professor was giving people testosterone. I was like, what? What's that? What's that? And he said, no, it's incredible. So then I read more and then you realise, actually, it's, this is just our normal hormone. We're not giving people drugs. We're not, you know, and it's, a lot of the studies have been done in libido, about libido. And of course, libido is very important, but it's actually testosterone is very important in our brains. So it can be really good for mood energy concentration Focus, stamina. yeah sleep is really good i mean i am very open that i use testosterone and i wish i'd started it about 10 years ago i was probably perimenopausal for many years without realizing and you know it's it's very difficult because you can't always diagnose we often do do a blood test to look and see how low it is but anyone who's perimenopausal or menopausal will have low levels you have to have estrogen on board first, otherwise it just converts to testosterone. Um, but there's a lot more women who would benefit from it. It used to be licensed. They used to have a patch. And then the company um, folded and they, the MHRA decided to stop the license. <gasps> uh, I don't quite know why, because... Can, can you I ask you something? Yeah. This, it, it, I get very angry. I mean, I'm starting to get angry now. I can feel it already. Yeah. I don't understand. Say, for example, GPs, you would learn a, a, a quite a good level of how to deal with a pregnant woman. Oh, yeah. Am I correct? You would know what to do. You'd know what's <laughs> happening, how to look after a pregnant woman. But not all women will have babies. I know. We learn a lot. Can you imagine coming to see me? OK, I'm a, I'm a GP and you come and see me and you've been diagnosed with raised blood pressure. And I say, oh, Davina, I'm really sorry. I don't know any medicines to treat blood pressure. You could go on a diet. You could do some exercise. Uh, but actually, don't worry about it. It will increase your risk of a heart attack. But it doesn't matter. Come back if it's really bad. And I might get you to see one of my doctors. Or I'll refer you to a clinic. But we haven't got many blood pressure clinics in the NHS. So, I'm... you know, and, and then take out the word blood pressure. Put in the word menopause. Oh, sorry, Davina. Your menopausal, it increases your risk of a heart attack. But not just the heart attack, actually. It increases your risk of diabetes, osteoporosis, dementia, and bowel cancer, and early death. But I don't know anything about it. You know? So I don't know how to prescribe anything for you. So go away and come back if it gets really bad. And, and Or I'll give you an antidepressant. And it's, it, But it, there's a big move out there. I don't want to be rude about doctors because no. a lot of doctors and also nurses and pharmacists who I who I educate and, and lecture really really want to know more and a lot of doctors have said to me was only hearing your lecture 
made me realize the bigger picture about the menopause because we talk pretty much the same as other women that it's hot flushes it sweats women even in the nhs website it said your symptoms will improve after 12 years now i've seen women with symptoms for 30 years yeah so so you sort of think oh it's a bit of a failure going to see my doctor and then if we've only been taught it's hot flushes sweats then you know so it's not the doctor's fault it's just the way it's happened and i think the media haven't helped you know what you're doing um and you know with the program and just being vocal is amazing you know five years ago i don't think any celebrity even admitted she was on hrt well I, you know what i really thought long and hard before i did i know you did yeah i really did because i thought i thought i thought i'd be judged what's the response been like though to be it's been because because I'm going to get emotional. It's what been really, it's first? been really amazing. Mm. It really has, and, and it's been an, it's been an outpouring because I think people just feel like they can talk about it, and it's not something we all have to brush underneath the carpet. No, I know, but it, it's so important because you know I couldn't get HRT for my own doctor, and I would have given up work as a GP if I wasn't on HRT. Because yeah. I could see my life just falling apart and I wasn't severe like the people I see mm. and you know every day we we hear these stories and, and we hear them on social media as well and you know I think things are changing we, I want to leave this Instagram live with a bit of positivity because it is really hard for women and I think what's happening out there is that women are empowering themselves and even when they're knocked down with the menopause they can still get information and you know, go with a friend, talk to a doctor, push back, I think is really important. And um, and it's amazing that you're one of the ambassadors for the menopause charity, which we're going to launch next week, officially with our website. The day after the show, right? Yes. Which so is great. we're going to really help women and also help healthcare professionals as well. And we've got a army of people who are already helping, but we're going to have a lot more. And obviously there's Liz Earl, who's our, Who's, oh, listen, I quickly yeah. want to give shout outs to people that we think that this army of women, I mean, I've never, I've never done an Instagram live with this many people watching. There's 3,167 of you, oh, which again so makes me very emotional because I just feel like it's something that women need to hear. But there are lots of warriors out there that people should follow. And Liz Earl is one of them. She is an amazing advocate mm -hmm. for all things menopause. She's such a great person to talk to she's got so many great resources on her website on her instagram yeah and she's like but she's like you so there's obviously you her and ring kelly and all three of you i'm very fortunate because i know very well but all three of you have not just taken what i've said and gone oh that's interesting louise i'm going to regurgitate you've taken a step back and you've said is that really true are you sure and you've gone and done your own research and i think that is incredible because you're not just regurgitating you, but it, it, it's really quite shocking. And I think the program on Channel 4 next week, you know, I, I have watched a bit of it and I cried, even though I hear these stories every day. And Kate Muir has done the most amazing job at getting a lot of information, but not losing sensitivity as well. And that's quite hard when you've mm. got lots of facts to get over, isn't mm. it? And, for sure. I mean, there are, there's a couple of questions that I got asked today, which I didn't know the answer to. And I like to feel like I know the answer to quite a lot, apart from the really medical ones. And then I often you'll have a resource on your News and Health website. The resources on your News and Health site are free. Doctor, menopause doctor. Doctor, yeah. menopause doctor website. The, the resources on the Menopause Doctor website are free. So they are, you, yeah, anybody can go and access them. You don't have to pay to get access to them. But I was asked by a friend of mine today who said um, she's, you know, in her early 60s, but she still feels terrible. Is there, is there any way she's allowed to start later? I said, I thought, yes. Yeah, of course. There's nothing. What, what really annoys me in medicine is that there's no black and white. There's no you are forbidden, you are allowed. It's about what is right for that individual. And certainly the NICE, the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence guidelines we work out of for menopause, say that women need to have an individualized consultation. So for example, anything we do really in medicine should be individualized. I'm not going to tell you to exercise more because you exercise a lot already, for example. <laughs> but other people who aren't even getting off the couch, of course I'll, I'll encourage them to exercise more. So we look at the bigger picture. 
with HRT, what's happened, because everyone's so scared of it, is that when this study, the WHI study came out, it said the benefits are really there mostly in women who start HRT within 10 years of their menopause. So that means on average, not that any woman's average, that you start it and you get the most benefits under the age of 60. So a lot of people have in this mind, oh my goodness, something awful happens over 60. In this study, I've already said they use the older types of HRT, but they also gave it to people who had heart disease, who were overweight, obese. So you can imagine if you have, hopefully our blood vessels, hopefully we're healthy, nice and clean, they're open, they've got no disease in, in, inside them. If you had had a heart attack and were obese, your blood vessels would start to narrow, they get these fatty deposits, they get um, sort of a bit of clotting sort of stuff in it. So the blood's a bit sludgy. I've already said if you have estrogen, it increases your risk of a, a clot. If you have tablet estrogen, then there is a small risk of a heart attack. And this is what happened in the WHI study, because I've already said they gave that tablet estrogen. So then people were saying, oh, you have to be really careful, women over the age of 60. But actually, most women we start HRT on in their 60s, 70s, 80s or 90s are not obese, are not people who've had big heart attacks, and we wouldn't give them oral estrogen anyway. So if you give it through the skin, it actually works to relax the blood vessels in the same way that some of the blood pressure treatments we use, relaxes blood pressures, lowers blood pressure. So it actually- And there's no well. risk of clot from transdermal, no risk, of, no clot risk of clot. No, because it goes straight through the skin into the bloodstream, bypasses our liver, which produces our clotting factors. Um, and so it just works straight away. So it's just replacing that hormone. So in fact, our oldest patient, was, uh, for her 90th birthday, treated herself to a consultation and got on HRT. So it's never too old to start HRT. Uh, and that is amazing to hear because I do get asked that a lot. Well, there's a lot of women. So the WHI study, this awful study that was the nail in the coffin for HRT, came out in 2002, so 19 years ago. So over the last 19 years, there's women who have suffered and suffered and suffered and suffered. And now they're thinking, am I too late? And no one is too late and no one's too late for advice. So it's really important. We have got a leaflet on the website, which is specifically for starting HRT many years after the menopause. And the other thing to add is this magic 60 doesn't mean that when we all reach 60, we have to stop taking HRT. No. We take it forever. Some, someone said something really funny on Twitter the other night. She said, because somebody asked me the question about, well, my doctor wants me to come off it. And I was like, absolutely not. And um, the, this other woman tweeted, she said, I'm going to have it pumped into my coffin. <laughs> really made me laugh. Um, so the other thing is, I think that um, I get a lot of women talking about being forced into um, the menopause, like out of nowhere from a hysterectomy. Yes. And not getting any support at all because of it especially young women or somebody going i've been put on the minimum amount and this is another one that really upsets me yeah so when we talk about surgical menopause if your ovaries both of them are removed you are therefore going to be menopausal the next day because you haven't got any hormones if you have one ovary removed you're more likely to become menopausal because that little one ovary might not work as well if you have a, your womb removed and you still have your ovaries, there's a risk that you might go into menopause earlier because your ovaries and the blood supply to your womb and the ovaries is similar and it might be disrupted in the operation. And it's almost like the two have to work together. So, and that's really difficult for women who've had a hysterectomy and they have their ovaries because they haven't got any periods to know what's going on. Mm. Um, the NICE guidance are very clear that if a woman's going to have her ovaries removed, then she should discuss with the surgeon before the ser before the operation, mm. not the morning of the operation when she's wheeled in and having that mm. setting, in advance about whether to take HRT. And as you know, Davina, there's very few women who cannot take HRT. Who would not be able to take HRT? No one, I don't think, really. Really? The, the, the big worry is... If a woman's had an estrogen receptor positive cancer, so that's yes. breast cancer, but some other types of cancers can have estrogen receptors in them. 
Now, a lot of people think, well, that means estrogen has caused the breast cancer or fueled it or initiated it. And it's more cancer is a lot more complicated than that. If it was all about estrogen causing breast cancer, then loads of young women and pregnant women would get breast cancer. Mm. Women who were older, who had gone through the menopause with low estrogen, would Would, never wouldn't get, get it. Yeah. So it's just even if you look simplistically. So there's a lot more that happens um, for breast cancer. But we know that... Um, some studies have shown that if you block estrogen, the, then the prognosis might be better for women. But the biggest benefit for women who have breast cancer is, is surgery and also radiotherapy as well. So blocking estrogen might help some women, but the majority of women would do really well anyway. And so it's looking at why we're blocking the um, estrogen and refusing estrogen as well, actually, because a lot of women come to us in the clinic and they say, do you know, I've got such bad vaginal dryness, I can't sit down. Yeah. And my bones hurt so much. I can't, I can't sleep. I can't function. I can't, I can't, it just can't work as a woman. And, um, and I'm also worried about my risk of osteoporosis and heart mm. disease and everything else. So, so for those women, they actually might still choose to take HRT. Some but that's the, their choice. You know, Absolutely. And some of the women, some of the studies have shown that women who've had breast cancer who take HRT actually have a better prognosis. And what's very interesting is that estrogen used to be a treatment for breast cancer before tamoxifen. So, yeah, because estrogen is very good for our bodies. So it can induce this thing called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So it sort of kills cells. So it's thought that it kills cancer cells as well. And women who take HRT are less likely to get bowel cancer, less likely to get other cancers, and they're also less likely to die from breast cancer. So if you look at breast cancer, is it the diagnosis that's worrying you or is it dying oh from breast God. cancer that's worrying, from, you, know, worrying you? One yeah. in seven of us taking HRT will get breast cancer because yes. one in seven women get breast cancer. Mm. But actually, we know from all the studies, actually, that women taking any type of HRT, even the bad type, have a lower risk of death from breast cancer. So, you know, this is where it's really important. And yeah. we also know that most women, thankfully, who've had breast cancer survive. And they've got a whole life ahead of them. Except but, they've got but heart disease and a massive yeah. heart attack. Yeah. Maybe not, but, right? So, no. And so we've just written a booklet. And it was probably the hardest thing that I helped write. Because it was a booklet for women who've had breast cancer. In fact, I've got one here. This is what it looks like. So it's, it says, been through breast cancer tick, did someone mention menopause? And it's a guide to all things menopause for women after breast cancer. And we've, it's quite long, um, but we've written it. And actually, I, two of the doctors who work with me, one of them has actually had breast cancer, were involved. And we got a patient involved who'd had breast cancer as well. Um, and we've done it, I hope very sensitively any feedback is most welcome because we can always change and improve it but it, it is about choice you know i'm not going to tell you which car to drive and mm. some cars are going to be more dangerous than others mm. that's your choice davina mm. or you know when to cross the road everything we do is a bit of a risk but we look at the overall benefits and and what's happened with so many women whether they've had breast cancer or, or not they're just they've just been sort of pushed into this it's too risky you can't have it and a bit mm. like on the nhs website it's telling me all the risks but actually it's not telling me that with hrt you can continue your job with hrt your partner won't leave you with yeah HRT, you can still have sex with hrt you're less likely to have osteoporosis heart disease dementia and this is where we have to change the narrative and let women make a decision it's our bodies it's our future we need to be able to decide really don't we and um, we, you were talking about sex and sex life. And I mean, we, we talked to a woman on the documentary about um, the pain that she went through because she had a vaginal atrophy and her vagina was so dry that she was literally trying to sit on ice blocks. She couldn't sit down. She was in absolute agony. She couldn't exercise. She couldn't do anything. And vaginal estrogen, there are so many women that suffer with it. And... Um, and yet yeah. vaginal estrogen is, is almost sort of unknown or unheard of and well, it carries zero that, risk of anything. No, so, so even on that show, I was looking again on the NHS website, it's telling me that vaginal estrogen is a, is a type of HRT. Well, it's not because it's not replacing hormones in the body. All it's doing is using estrogen 
locally in the vagina and spreading to the surrounding tissues. So this means that women who are really a bit scared of oestrogen, if they've had an oestrogen receptor positive cancer and it might be a bit too soon to consider HRT or they don't want to, they can still use vaginal oestrogen. And we've just written a consensus document with the British Society of Sexual Medicine, who I do some work with, just going through and looking at all the evidence about it because it is so safe. And as you know, some women who take HRT, probably about 20%, still need to use vaginal oestrogen. And um, I know you were saying on the documentary, even just wiping yourself after having a wee, it didn't quite feel the same. And, and you know, some people say just literally walking, it's very uncomfortable and, and painful. It shouldn't be. If there's any change to the vagina, but also any urinary symptoms, the first thing as women we should be thinking about, are we on vaginal oestrogen? And a lot of women I see in my clinic have been referred to urologists, to gynecologists. I mean, this is crazy, you know, isn't it? And you just say, well, let's have some anyway. And it often really melts away because the oestrogen also goes into the blood and surrounding tissues. So some urinary symptoms, some people just find coughing and sneezing, they have a bit of a leak. Well, that's not normal. So having some vaginal oestrogen can help with that, can help reduce urinary tract infections. And What's vaginitis? Because somebody asked me about that today. She yeah, so itis just means inflammation. So it means inflammation of the vagina. And so some people can get something called vaginitis or, or vaginismus as well, where you get sort of abnormal um, sort of tightening really of the vagina and as you can imagine it's a very sensitive area <laughs> um, and if someone's had a bad sexual experience every time they have sex it's going to be awful but it's not just sex actually it can be smears as well so you know the cervical screening um i did a survey on my instagram about a year ago and about 60 60 percent of women had had not gone for their next smear test because the last one was so painful Oh no, that's terrible. Which is awful, and we hear it a lot, but then when it is painful, the nurse will just say, oh well, never mind, it's only every three years or every five years, don't worry about it. Well no, actually, if it's uncomfortable, it's likely there's some early vaginal dryness happening and they need to have vaginal oestrogen. But I think... Is... Yeah, go on, sorry. I, I just wanted to say, what I love about you, Louise, is that... All of these things that you say when people say, well, it's okay, it's just another three years or doctors or nurses that don't know enough about it. And I know that there are lots out there who do, but doctors that don't will go just, you know, it's natural, it's normal, it's the way things happen. And what I love about you is every time I say anything to you, you're like, no, well, no, <laughs> we're not going to take it. And I said in um, that that little film that I put on my Instagram yes. today, and you, you put on yours, we, I cut it for you. Um, I, I said in that, that this, I take testosterone and I, I still feel judged by people for taking testosterone, but I'm not taking it to feel different. I'm taking it to get me back to normal. And do I deserve to feel back to normal? Yes, well, I do. I mean, I think the other great thing, I mean, that film is brilliant for so many reasons. So thank you for doing it. It's a me. great pleasure. But also at the beginning, you're taking thyroxine. Now, thyroxine is another hormone, right? You could live without it, but without it, you'd feel really tired, sluggish. You'd Exhausted. Mm. But you could, you could survive. But which, who, would, who would stop you from having thyroxine? I don't think anyone would. And it's very mm. easy to prescribe. And so certainly when I lecture doctors and, 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 and healthcare professionals and all the doctors that work with me are the same, they give a lot of lectures too. We try and break it down and say, look, it's actually really easy to prescribe HRT. And on my website, if any of you go to the Menopause Doctor website and, and put in easy, there's an easy HRT prescribing guide. A lot of women have downloaded it and printed it off and given it to their doctors because it, it just says... Oh, where do they find it again? On... So on the Menopause Doctor website, yeah. if you just search easy, it yeah. will come up as easy HRT prescribing guide and it's just a PDF. You can just print it so off. So you can print it off and take it to your doctor yeah, if, uh, if you feel they're a bit nervous about what yeah, to do. Yeah, it's referenced as well because obviously I get a lot of pushback from some healthcare professionals because I run a private clinic. And yeah. Just about my private clinic. And you know what, Tavina, I would love to tell you that the women who come to my clinic are women that are very complicated medically or that they've got lots of money, but they're not. And... You know, we have women who um, their, their family give 20 quid each to pay or it's their birthday present. And recently, actually, we had a lady who came and um, 
she came downstairs to pay and my reception said, no, it's paid for already. Your boss has paid for it. And she'd worked with the same guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm still there. She'd worked for the same person for 20 years and he had um, seen the change in her and he didn't want to lose her as an employee oh. because she's a really valuable member of her team. So he phoned in advance to our practice manager and says, I want to pay for when she comes, but I want it as a surprise. So oh. he paid for it. And honestly, she burst into tears. We all burst into tears. <laughs> But isn't that amazing? Because actually for him, that is the best amount of money he will spend because she was 45. But Louise, you know, I, I'm going to go to better light. Louise, this is a thing, another thing that I feel really strongly about. And I do love businesses for doing it. But often businesses are saying, we're going to start a thing where people can take days off because of the menopause. Yeah. But um, actually, I would rather get, and this is something I'd love to talk to the charity about, I would rather send out envoys of people to tell big companies that they should start a mini menopause clinic within Absolutely. their business. You know I mean, that's what we've, we've started to do that. And we're certainly um, looking at doing it more with the, with the menopause as well, because there's one thing awareness is really important. We did a survey with West Midlands Police where I, as you know, worked for a while. And we found that 78% of women didn't know what was going on until they had information about the menopause and a lot of them have been signed off for depression anxiety yeah. migraines all these things but actually what they don't really want is a time of flexible working because that's less mm. that's like what they're going to do with their time so yeah you know at, certainly at my work i we employ a lot of people and we have a policy that they get free consultations obviously but, you know, I invest time in them because actually if they're on the right dose and type of HRT, I'll get, you know, a lot better out of them. I don't want them making mistakes. And also going they're going to love coming to work. And, it, and it's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. So but what we're trying to do, and certainly with the charity we want to do a lot more, is really educating the workplace, but trying to help so that women can get in-house um, appointments. Because, you know, if you're at work, half an hour, your life will be transformed by having the right consultation. But we also need to make it covered by medical insurance because it's not covered by insurance. It's you terrible. Know, if I was a man with low testosterone or I'd had my testicles removed, I would have a testosterone on, on private insurance, but it's not for women. So if I, my youngest patient, as you know, is 19. I have another young patient who's 23 who is unable to get her HRT from the NHS. They've refused to give it to her. What? So had to... I know, they, the first, oh, it's just so sad. So she's in a same-sex relationship. The first doctor she saw was an endocrinologist, a, a hormone specialist, and said, HRT is too risky for you. She's, she's just become menopausal early, which some women do, no reason. Her periods had stopped and she started to get symptoms. And because she, she's in a same-sex relationship, she said, well, what about being able to um, have a baby? And he said, it doesn't matter because there's two wounds in your relationship. So she went away very sad and then she came to the clinic and um, Dr. Sarah Ball, who's probably busy typing away, had um, um, saw her and transformed her life. She was suicidal when she came to the clinic. Really, really awful. She's really improved with the right dose and type of HRT, but she wants to buy a house with her partner and she shouldn't and can't afford to come to the clinic. And so um, where she lives in Greater Manchester, they won't prescribe the HRT, they won't prescribe the body identical hormones. So she went to a gynecologist who said, you're wasting my time. The dose of hormone you're on is too high. You need to go on a really low dose patch and that's all you can have. Um, but surely she patch. needs it even more than we do. Of course she does, because when you're young, you have to replace the missing hormones. And when you're in your 20s, your body needs a lot more hormones. And if it doesn't have enough, you've got this increased risk of all these diseases and also feeling suicidal so um she's been really struggling and i've been engaging with people high up in the nhs to say why can't she get it and people are looking into it but the meanwhile she's run out of her hrt so what does she do does she become suicidal give up her job or get it from us privately and of course we don't charge much money for the any for the hrt because morally i don't want to make money out of that but it, it's not right she shouldn't be paying anything she should be getting it free and if you're well you're you've got hypothyroidism so therefore you get free prescriptions on the nhs for everything yeah, don't you? yeah. 
that yeah. what they wanted to do with the charity is campaign that yeah we'd all get everything free if we we're on a hormone replacement because and like i said earlier it's not like it's really expensive no. and if you think about um osteoporosis and uh, doing a hip replacement a hip replacement's 15 grand and HRT, which could prevent osteoporosis, is at 120 quid a year. Like, go figure. And think about the effect on the economy that getting all these women who would like access to HRT, if you got them all on HRT, you would have them feeling better than they have done in years and back at work and really enjoying it. And we are a formidable workforce. When you think about women in, women in the workplace, we're amazing. We... <laughs> Don't we? It's, it's, but it's totally true. And, you know, I, I, um, one of my patients, actually, who um, I've been talking to the NHS about as an example, so she had a really good high-powered job and um, she just couldn't work because her brain didn't function and she was feeling very overwhelmed. So she decided to work as a local vet as a, in a receptionist. Nice job. But she couldn't remember her login and she just couldn't remember anything. And so she gave up that because it was too embarrassing. So she became a cleaner. And so she was on zero pay contract, no pension, but she really wanted a job. But she was getting a lot of muscle weakness. Joint pain. Joint pain. Mm -hmm. She couldn't use a broom or an, and so she gave up work completely. She was diagnosed with fibromyalgia for 10 years. And it was only she'd watched something that I was in, I don't know, on Lorraine or something, and decided to come to the clinic. And her mother had bought her the consultation as a present and in three months I just gave a bog standard NHS type HRT after three months she said to me Louise I don't think I've ever had fibromyalgia I cannot tell you how I feel the lights come on my brain is working I'm sleeping my muscle joint pains have just melted and you know she said I've got a cupboard full of antidepressants I've um, been back and forth to the doctors at least once a month and I've just been told there's nothing wrong with you and it won't be related to your hormones because that causes flushes and sweats so and the, and this is the other thing like you know it, it is alarming how many how many health specialists don't know what the symptoms of menopause yeah. are that it is a lot more there's dozens of them and, then, and it's not and just hot flush hot flushes and sweats no, it's not. And so certainly, actually, I've got a card here. Look, you recognise this to be... Balance. The Balance, the balance app. app. I talk about it and non-stop. Actually, do you know, we've been shortlisted for an award. I know. So I, I'm to. retweeting it regularly. Yeah, so the closing is tomorrow, the final call. Oh. We're up against Headspace, which is a very big... It's big. But, but, you know, we, we're new to the block, but isn't it lovely? And it's all, it's all thanks to the team behind it all who are working so hard because it's already been downloaded in women of more than 150 countries across the world. And we've had no marketing budget at all, but it's free. And it, that, the bit that's free is always going to be free. We'll add and to it's, it. And it's got a big, long list on there of symptoms. A massive list of symptoms, yeah. And, it, and it, what's really important is people can monitor their symptoms but what's really good about this as well is that you can create a health report so it will pull together your symptoms and your periods if you're having periods and that is how you should start your consultation with your healthcare professional so you can so print it out and take it in out, there take it to your doctor and say or, or your nurse or whoever you're seeing and say look i've done all these symptoms i've read information I think I'm perimenopausal or menopausal and I would like to take HRT. And, and so many people a... say that they, they then get sent off for a blood test. But if you're having periods, no, they're pointless. No, they really aren't needed. And if a woman is over 45, you shouldn't have blood to hormone blood tests. Even if you're younger, to be honest, I don't do them very often because they can be so unreliable. Um, so if they're abnormal, yes, that can help. If they're normal it's still I'm going to listen to the woman. So in medicine, I've always been taught and I always practice, I'm not going to do a test unless it changes what I do clinically. Um, and also it delays, you know, if you've come to see me as a doctor and I say, oh, Davina, if I have blood tests, I'll see you in three months time. You've got three more months of suffering. This is well, exactly I what I hear all the time. Oh, I'm doing a blood test. I'm going back for the results in two weeks. But in those two weeks, you know, your kids will be put through misery. Like my, I'll have lost my keys 17 times. My phones in the bin like I, I can't you know I can't do anything no and so often I will say to people 
I have no idea how many of your symptoms are related. You know, um, I don't know if they've got muscle joint pains. Is, have they got an arthritis? Have they got something else? Um, if they've got migraines or headaches, is there something else going on in their brain? I obviously don't know. But what I do know is that their periods have changed or stopped. They're getting some symptoms. So I'm going to give them HRT anyway. Anyway. And then I'll review them. If I'm really worried, I will refer them for these tests anyway, but I will still start them on HRT because we know there are so many other benefits and we know the earlier women take it, the better as well. And but there are different types, there are different doses. So a lot of people say, oh, HRT doesn't work for me. It's because they're not on the right type. And often they're on, like you say, the synthetic can, estrogens. Can you be intolerant or allergic to HRT? No, not really. So some people find... There is a thing called histamine intolerance where some people find that they get a reaction to the estrogen. Um, but there are ways of minimizing it and looking at your diet. So no one's allergic because who's allergic to their own hormones, really? It's more the sort of changes. So, for example, some people find migraines can get a lot worse during the perimenopause. And if you imagine the perimenopause, your hormones don't go down nicely. They go all over the place. So you can, when they, you get really big high and then a really big low, your body's going, oh my goodness, what's going on? And that can trigger sort of symptoms. And so people think, oh, I can't tolerate hormones. But if you're on HRT, you're, you're sort of flatlining. You're having the same amount all the time. So nice. No drama. Yeah. Yeah. No drama. And you know what? I said earlier, I feel better than, you know, I feel so much better. But it's not even that I feel so much better because lots of people say, oh, am I too young? Am I too young? You know, um, menopause can happen to you anytime. Perimenopause can happen ages before your menopausal. Absolutely. And I was 44 when I noticed, but I'm pretty sure it started a little bit before. Well, I think it often does, and we, we don't always realise. So, I mean, I had my third child when I was 40, and, you know, I've always just then felt a bit tired, a bit, and I thought, oh, I've got three children, it's mm. just five and everything else, and, and sleep is just a bit disrupted, but you thought, oh, well, it's because I'm used to being woken in the night by a baby, but actually, I look back and think, no, I'm sure I was low in testosterone as well as estrogen, and I didn't mm. think about it at all. So. And so many women, I mean, I think it was something like 66% um, when they go to see the doctor, and they're feeling a bit low, and their mood is down, and I think they get prescribed antidepressants. Yeah. So this is really important because antidepressants, there's no evidence that they help with the low mood associated with the perimenopause or menopause. There are some women, for example, who've had breast cancer who might not want to rush into HRT. They might help the hot sweats and flushes, but they won't help the low mood. If someone we think has got clinical depression, then of course we'd give them antidepressants. But if they're menopausal or perimenopausal, we'll give them HRT as well. And there is some evidence, actually, that if you've got estrogen on board, your antidepressant will work better. So it's not like one or the other, but you wouldn't just give antidepressants for menopause or perimenopause. And, so and also, it would be it. even more depressing if your antidepressants weren't working. I mean, yeah, it would make you feel women. even lower. Yeah, and a lot of women say, oh, it didn't help, or it just numbed my symptoms. One of my patients said to me, oh, I crashed my car the other day, and I just went, oh, never mind. She said, but that's the antidepressants. I don't care about anything, but that's quite a scary place to be. Mm. Um, but she's, a lot of women are told, well, that's all you can have. Well, it's mm. not, and this is where we just have to keep pushing back and saying the evidence, the nice guidance. Mm. You know, the nice guidance are available on the web, on any web, on their website, on my website, mm. and you know, I think it's, you know, we really want to help doctors get education. And as you know, I've got a not-for-profit company with doing research and education. We've got an education program through that not-for-profit. So people can really get educated in a very simple way. It's online, so they can do it at home. They don't have to take time off work to go to a course. Um, and that's really helping people, actually, just to be able to get that confidence. Because it is confidence when it's something totally. you're not sure about. Totally. I wanted to quickly ask you um, uh, to kind of go back to um, page one. Um, so you you got your symptoms and you go to the doctor and the doctor says no. What do you do? Because I get asked this a lot and I, can, I kind of go, well, go back again and go back again. But it's so demoralizing. So what I would do is before that first appointment, so go back before you've opened your book for chapter one, Download the app, the Balance app, 
read as much information as possible. Everything on there is evidence-based. Download the, the health report and print it off. So when you go to your appointment, it's only 10 minutes, so every second counts in that appointment, you go and you say, I've made the diagnosis myself. I'm 99% sure I'm perimenopausal or menopausal. This is my health report with my symptoms on it. Now, I have read about HRT and this is what I want. And if the doctor says no, it's really hard because I get scared of going to see doctors and I think, oh, everything they say is going to be right. I would then challenge that decision and say, is there a reason why you're refusing? Um, and if they say, oh, well, you have to try antidepressants, we have to just say, no, actually, I've read the nice guidance and I know that there are benefits of me taking HRT and I'm prepared to take any risks. They're very small. If you won't give it to me now, when can I come back and when can I get it and who can I see? And it shouldn't be that people are referred to a menopause clinic um, unless they're complicated. Even women who've had a family history of breast cancer can still take, safely take HRT. Most other types of cancers and estrogen receptor negative cancers still safely take HRT. So for can most I... women, they have to just, and I would even have a friend, I know a lot of it's now Zoom, but have a friend sitting next to you who can help. Yes. Um, and just sort of button yes. up. <laughs> yes, back up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, and um, because of the health benefits that I've heard about, there are many women that say, oh, I just breezed through it. But is it, is it possible that it would be healthy for a woman who has had no symptoms, um, say at 50, to go on HRT for the benefits? Well, you can answer that question, can't you? Yes, it is yeah. true. I think, I, think, I think, you know, if you look, I'm not just being flippant and saying give HRT to everyone. I'm doing it based on evidence. Now, if you just look for heart disease, which we mentioned at the beginning, if you look at the evidence for reducing the risk of a heart attack in someone who's fit and well, we call that primary prevention. So you're preventing something happening. If you give HRT, it will reduce your risk of getting a heart attack by about 50% reduce your risk of dying from heart disease by about 70%. If you compare that, I know it's a lot. If you compare that with a statin, lots of people take statins, or a blood pressure lowering drug, then that reduction is not as good as with taking HRT. So wow. just for heart disease, which kills a lot of women. HRT is the best taking. treatment. The other thing is it can prevent and or reduce the risk of dementia. Now, dementia Huge for me, and heart that one. disease are the top two killers in women. So actually, just for that. So if I stop my HRT now, I might not get symptoms because I might have gone through my five years of symptoms or however long they were going to be. But the day I stop taking HRT, that's the day where I'll get this build up on the lining of my arteries i'll get this accelerated bone loss my brain will start to go because it won't be fed the right hormone you know and so it's the health risks that we're thinking of so these women who say well my symptoms aren't too bad or i just wait until they're bad it's not about symptoms you know if you had your underactive thyroid gland if your symptoms were bad or not bad you would still take thyroxine because it's an important hormone for cell processes and we have to think of the hormones, especially estrogen, it's so important. Every single cell in our body has a receptor that responds to estrogen. And now with COVID, we know women oh, it's amazing. with HRT are about 80% less likely to die from COVID. So even if we want it to protect our immune system, then that's fine. Or our heart, or our bone, or our brain. or You know, so, so it's, I think it's actually regardless of symptoms, women should consider. And so... What we should be doing as healthcare professionals is saying, why isn't this 50-year-old lady taking HRT? Yes, Rather why isn't she? Course, Not, she oh my God, it's dangerous. I don't want to put you on it because it's dangerous. And I hear that all the time that doctors are saying, I can't put you on it, it's too risky. But in fact, why aren't we putting you on it? Um, is there a good reason why you can't go on HRT? That yeah. is, that it, it's reframing. Like we literally have it to get is. everybody. It absolutely is. And, you know, we need to rebrand the menopause. We need to think of it as a, a female hormone deficiency with health risks. And then when you talk about deficiency, it's like, well, where is it? How can I get it back? And we need to not blame ourselves as well for feeling 
bad for having symptoms and taking HRT is not a failure actually it's a disease preventative treatment and that's what's really pivotal I think about some of the work we're trying to do with the charity and the education is let's just change the whole narrative about what the menopause means to us and our future health um, because that, I think that's the only way we can convince people about how safe HRT is and and actually for the men and the cynics let's look at the health economy and let's look at the global economy of women not working as well and actually the drain the the financial drain of us all being cooped up with dementia and osteoporosis in nursing homes That's it doesn't even bear thinking thing. about hmm. you and me louise when we're old ladies we can start a commune I know. Great we, we can all be like super duper fun, live in a sort of commune and all be like yeah, super duper. I don't want to be cooped up. I'm no, I don't daughter, want to be cooped up either. I said to either. my daughter a while ago, would you come and visit me if I had dementia? She said, well, no, because you won't remember. What's the point? <laughs> but, mean. You know, I mean? We want we want to keep active. And I think, you know, there's so much more to life. And I also think, um, ending on a sad note really, but every day could be our last. Yes. You know? And so we don't want to be worrying, worrying, worrying about the future that might not happen to us. We need to. So if we start looking at benefits and actually taking HRT can enable us to have a better lifestyle as well. You know, and you'd be exercising like you are. Without there are a few anything. there are a few people that have been sending messages. I've, I've dipped in and out a little bit here that um, there is a few things I want to say that um, the transdermal HRT carries no risk of blood clots. Um, so a few people have said, oh, I've had DVT, I can't have it. Transdermal has no risk of blood clots. Secondly, quite a few people have talked about, I can't take it because my family has a history of breast cancer. If you've joined late, Louise is going to save this and put it yeah, on her page. Well, put it out, but you can still have, um, you can still have HRT, even if you've had a personal clot. And if you've had a strong, even a strong family history, or you've had a BRCA gene, or if you've had your ovaries removed because of BRCA gene, you can still have HRT. So please, please, I hope, you know, I love you, Louise. And I, I oh, you're this. very kind, but I'm I love sure. what you're doing. I love you too, but obviously, but I love what you're doing. And so just before we go, I think we've got about a minute, just to say, Channel 4, Channel Next 4, Wednesday, May the 12th, the 12th, 9 o'clock, and Can't get ask. get everybody to watch it, get your, your, the get your men folk, it. get your uncles and your granddads and your brothers and your friends and your boyfriends and your partners, get everybody to watch it because um, everybody should know more about uh, this thing that happens to every yeah. single yeah. woman in the world. Watch it. Download the app, Balance, and go on to the Menopause Charity website next Wednesday. And Brilliant. Help. Let's work together on this. Yes. So thanks to Venus. And it's please great. save this because I want to post it as well. I will do. Okay, I, I love I won't you. mess up. Don't, don't mess up. <laughs> You're right, Dr. Louise. Right. You're not going to mess up. Yeah, all right. Okay. Love you. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.